Hello everyone, my name is Dolores Sendejo, serving as the Interim Superintendent at South Sand Independent School District, where we are family. We are excited to begin our first ever podcast and our first ever uh, Facebook video as well. We are excited to share with you uh, in our episodes uh, what are some of the positives initiatives that we're taking on within our district. Uh, we are excited to have our first guest, our very own Director of Teaching and Learning, Ms. Amy Shields. Ms. Shields, welcome. Thank you. I'm excited yes. to be here. We're excited to have you today. Uh, throughout our podcast and our Facebook video, we'd like to ask a few questions. And we were excited to consider teaching and learning because that is what we're all about. And uh, it allows us an opportunity to highlight the great things that are taking place throughout uh, the year most importantly for our students. With that being said, our topic for today uh, is our common assessment process. And who better than our director to share what that is like, what, it, what it's all about uh, from day to day, and obviously the timeline of planning. So with that, I'd like to ask our very first question is, what is our process for our common assessments? Well, I'm excited to tell you about that. Um, it's this is my fourth year in the district, and um, so we've we've developed this process over time to make sure that we have the best quality assessments that we have uh, can for our students because mm -hmm. the better the assessments, the better the data that we're going to get, and that data helps us make instructional decisions for our kids and know how we can help them. Um, with the information that they need um, to be learning every day in all the subjects that, that we're testing in. So what we do is we write, we start the year and we map out what students are going to learn from day to day. So we give assessments um, every nine weeks. So we just had our first nine week assessment yes. in uh, mid-October, the week of October 14th. Right. Um, I'm sure parents that you heard about that. <laughs> um, and so uh, depending on what grade they're in, um, they take an assessment for a test that they would test on STAR. Okay. So for instance, a fifth grader will take a reading assessment, a math assessment, and a science assessment because those are the assessments right. that they uh, take when it comes to STAR. So uh, what we do is we have a curriculum team that's made up of instructional coaches and the campus instructional coaches and the facilitators. And so we look at um, the student expectations that students learn in each nine weeks. And so we uh, write the tests based on those student expectations. Okay. Um, and so, you know, in October we had had um, nine weeks of, of school. So we agreed that we would have um, about 16 questions on each assessment, um, somewhere, you know, around there, give or take. And so the curriculum team, we have a process, so we write the assessments. Um, some of them, um, more than one person works to write the assessment. Okay. And then we have test banks that we use to do that. And we make sure that they are aligned to the rigor of what students would be okay. uh, taking on STAR. Um, because we want students from the very beginning to, to experience what it would be like on that day. And then that helps us know where we need to adjust and help them um, with their learning. Okay. So we write the assessments and then we also have a quality check process. So with the quality checking, we, we have somebody actually take the test like okay. they're a student. <laughs> we want to know, you know, if the content is correct, you know, if all the an if we have the right answers there, right, right. you know, and all of those things. So we have somebody that takes the test like a, like a student mm -hmm. and then we have somebody else that looks at it just for spelling and um, is the formatting correct and all those things because when we write the assessments, we format them just like what the STAR test looks right, like. Right. Because think for a third grader who's taking the test for the first time, mm -hmm. probably in October, that's the, probably the longest test they've ever taken. We want them to start to experience what that's gonna be like mm -hmm. and then as the year goes on, our assessments get a little bit longer and a little bit longer because right. we learned more. Sure. And so after the quality check process, then we um, take the feedback that we get from the edits that, you know, the edits that are needed from the quality check process. Right. We make the edits, we finalize them, and then they get sent off to a printer and then the printer delivers them straight to the campuses. Okay. And then the campuses have to do some sorting and preparation in order to get the assessments ready. So a lot of the campuses have like a basket for each teacher and they organize them by day. One day we take math, one day we take reading and so forth. So um, that's our process and we have to stay ahead 
because um, we, you know, when we took the assessments in October, we actually started writing those assessments at the beginning of September because um, it takes a while to write them right. and then we have to quality check and then we have to make the final edits and then they get sent off to the printer and the printer needs a couple of weeks to print them and then they deliver them and then we have to give the campus is at least a week to get to, to organized, right. yes. You mentioned that you've been here uh, with uh, SalesSan for about four years and we know that this process uh, is fairly new. Why was it that we created this process of our common assessments for our district? Well, you know, in, in my previous job, I was responsible for writing all the math assessments for <laughs> the district and it, that's a lot of assessments and so I feel like we're very fortunate to have a team of people because more than one set of eyes um, looking at something is, is always better. Right. Um, and so I think that, you know, in my first year here, there was a lot of mistakes on the first round of assessments. Okay. And that, you know, that creates upset that the teachers and the kids, you know, no one likes mistakes, but especially on an assessment because we really need that data okay. so that we can help our students. So um, when I saw that, you know, I said, okay, we need a process in place to right. ensure that we have the best assessments for our students, that they don't have mistakes. And I will tell you, I mean, as much as we have this process in place, it definitely has minimized the number of mistakes that we have, but we still have, you know, one or two questions that sometimes, you know, some, you know, we have two right answers or we have some, some something that we didn't catch but we always make sure that that doesn't count against the students. So what we can do is um, we have Edgeforia that captures our data and, and kind of grades the assessment. So what we can do is we can go into Edgeforia and we call it zero score. So we zero score that question so it doesn't count against the student or their grade or, or whatever. So okay. Thank you for that. Um, along with what you've shared, we know that there are oftentimes some challenges uh, I'd rather share some opportunities for growth and learning. Uh, what, what are some of those uh, potential challenges or areas that we know that we have to learn from to better streamline the process? Well, I think one of the challenges um, is that we write 28 different assessments wow. for yes. grades. Um, we write the assessments for grades three through eight um, for all the tested, star tested mm -hmm. subjects. Um, and then in elementary, we have three grades three, four, five that also test in Spanish. That's right. <laughs> so we have to, you know, make sure that we have good quality assessments in Spanish, and that has been a little bit of a challenge because mm -hmm. we want to make sure that, you know, um, sometimes when we go into our test banks, we have to double check and make sure that the language, uh, the academic language in Spanish, is correct. Right. Right. Um, and so we really want to make sure. And so a lot of times, like I have my coaches really intensively. Um, double check um, the Spanish versions to make sure that the same language that our students are using, our students and our teachers are using every day in the classroom is what is they're going to see on the test. Right, and right. it should, it, they should look at the test to see um, the, the previous STAR test to know what academic the way that things are being phrased or said um, on the test. So based on that, and, and I know we've had our first nine weeks assessments, did we have an opportunity to learn from those already in preparation for the second set? We <laughs> you, actually you, did. You smile there, so yes, I'd love to hear. Um, we are, we're actually in the process right now okay. of writing the second set of right. assessments, which we will take um, the week of December the 9th. And so, like I said, you know, we have to get them ready. We have to, you know, be ahead of time. Right. Um, and we, we're about to go through our quality check process on Friday, and then we'll go through final edits and send them to the printer and all that. But um, we did, we did, like, I'll give you a, a specific example of what we learned. Okay. So we, we used um, the Teeks Resource Test Bank to write the fourth grade uh, English and Spanish writing test. Well, their test bank puts revising and editing and it mixes them okay. together. Well, that creates a problem because on, on the STAR test, they're separated. Separate, right? And that's important and it's important for our kids to see it just like they're gonna see it on STAR. And so where that created an issue is that our kids who um, get accommodations on the test, um, they there's certain things that can be read to them and things that cannot be read to them. So because it was mixed together, um, we had to allow the entire um, test to be read to them, whereas if it had been separated, they only would have read one part I to see. them. Because in revising and editing, um, and I can't, honestly, I can't remember 
it's the editing. They, they, I think it's the editing that is not read to them. And, or one or the other, I can't remember which one it is right now, but one can be read to them and one cannot be read to them. So now what we're doing is we're just going to use actual star passages like for the revising and editing. We'll just go into some of the older um, assessments, assessments which are still right. you know valid and that we can use and we're going to make sure that they're separated this time so that will be our resource for fourth and seventh so we don't have them mixed again. But that's all we can do is yeah. learn from the process and strengthen it. Absolutely. So thank you for that. You shared so many great things about the process, about our timeline. The magic question, what happens with this data when <laughs> we, we have it? Uh, that's the exciting part of, of it and I know it's something that you you are anxious uh, Leah, waiting for when it when it's ready to go. I'm definitely always keeping an eye on it. <laughs> um, but the teachers too, they're always anxious to know. Um, you know, we have teachers that are competitive. You know, and they're <laughs> you know they want their <laughs> students to do well, which I love, and um, and they anxiously await the data too, and the principals do too. And um, I think you know what we want to make sure is that we're sharing this data with our parents so that parents know like you know, where their students' um, strengths are and then where they're still striving to learn certain concepts or certain things. Um, and so what we do is we have a very rigorous data process that we go through um, kind of together. The teachers sit together with the instructional coach and the leadership team from every campus and they go through the test question by question. And they talk about not just what the right answer was, but which kid, like if they pick the wrong answer, why might right. have they picked that answer? Because on STAR, there's reasons why they picked that answer. Because you can tell, oh, they think this instead of this. And so that helps the teacher know how they're gonna help reteach the student and help them understand based on what their misunderstanding was um, if they picked one of the wrong answers. Mm -hmm. So we go through each question. And so in our data process, depending on the number of students who answered the question um, correctly, we decide, you know, how are we going to reteach right. the information? Is it going to be, um, do we need to do a lot of reteach? Well, if we do, we, we, we're not gonna just stop and do a big, you know, do a big you know 60 minute or 90 minute reteach right. for a bunch of days what we're going to do is because we still have other curriculum that we're we're teaching the students so what we're going to do is we're going to take it in little chunks and we might work on it every day for 15 minutes for okay. for five days and then we might you know give the students a little quiz and see okay like we worked on this and practiced it for five days for like 15 minutes a day which is like 75 minutes, which would be the equivalent of like another class period or even more if you're a middle school student. And then we might give them a quiz to see, okay, like how many students now have mastered this? And so several more have mastered it, but we still have a few that haven't. Well, then we might pull those students into a small group and okay. teach them in a right. small group. Or if just a few students miss something to begin with, then that's where we have like small group instruction. Um, or we might even have after school tutoring. So some, some campuses do that and they ask to keep students after school. Um, so there's within the day interventions and then there's right. some after school interventions as well. But um, we just went through the processes with um, data, tearing it apart yeah. and making the plans. And um, so in these elaborate plans, um, the teachers get support from the instructional coaches and the administrative leadership team. And then um, those plans are monitored so that we make sure that all students are receiving exactly what it is individualized that they need to be um, successful as they move forward. One of the really important things about the data is that, um, and the reason that we give these assessments, is that these are aligned to the rigor of STAR. And so these help us know, you know, we're incrementally figuring out, are our students, okay, have they mastered this piece? Have they mastered this piece? So if we do that as we go along and we're helping students, you know, with their misunderstandings as we go along, then we will know by the time they get to STAR, they will be more successful. So these are kind of our milestones that help us know how to best help our students shine on the day of STAR. I love that you shared milestones. And then earlier you also shared parents. You talked about parents and I, I, I'd like to wrap up with asking that question about what role can our parents uh, play in, in this particular time of the year, whether it's right after the first nine weeks, second nine weeks, and of course I know we have the benchmark to pre better prepare our students for the STAR assessments. What would be our message to our parents through this process? 
You know, the best way that parents can help us is to make sure that their students are here at school every single day. We pack a lot of learning um, into school every single day and we do a lot of interventions every day and, you know, within the day or, um, and then the other thing is parents can, you know, if, if, a, if you're, you know, teacher or uh, request, your child's teacher request that they stay after school and um, for tutoring, it really, you know, um, would be helpful if, you know, I know sometimes it's hard, but just make, a, you know, to make allowances for that. Um, we have schedule, you know, everybody has scheduling issues sometimes, but um, just if, if that's another opportunity for a teacher to help a student and if the parents can, you know, pick the students up a little later and make sure they can stay for tutoring, then that's another really um, helpful piece. Ms. Shields, thank you again. South Sand family, there you have it, Ms. Amy Shields, teaching and learning. We appreciate you taking the time and answering our questions about common assessment. Again, thank you all for joining us in our podcast Facebook video with our interim superintendent, myself, Dolores Sendejo. We thank you and stay tuned for our next episode. You have a great day.